audio jungle. Let's talk about our second big idea from chapter one, exercise four. Um, the concept we're going to start talking about is my favorite subject, divisibility. Uh, divisibility is exploring how a number divides, and you would think that that's not very important. In fact, a lot of you guys don't even like division at all and think it's the worst of everything we do in math. Um, however, it's really useful if you know what a number divides by, because essentially if you know what it divides by, you know what it's made of. Then we're going to be able to apply this when we do fractions. If you think fractions are hard, it's probably because you don't understand divisibility. Um, when we do algebra, a lot of things are going to be made easier for us. Ratios, proportions, percentages, all of that ties in with divisibility. So let's start talking about it. Uh, to be able to do it, we need some vocabulary words, okay? Uh, first word is, what does it mean to be divisible? To be divisible means um, uh, when a number is divisible by another number, it divides it perfectly. Divisible. To be divided perfectly. What am I talking about perfectly? I'm talking about with no remainder. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen, and we'll have a, a division video a little later, when there's a remainder. Um, to be divided perfectly, I'm saying no remainder by another number. Now, you won't find this question itself um, in section 1.4 of your GED book. However, I've seen this on plenty of practice tests for the GED. You might see this very problem on the GED, so let's look at it. Is 87 divisible by 7? And so what I'm asking you is, does 7 divide 87 perfectly? So later I'm going to show you a lot of tricks. But for now, we know no tricks. We're going to have to do it the long way, the old-fashioned way. We're going to have to just divide and see what happens. So I'm going to divide 7 into 87. Seven, 87 divided by 7 is written as 7 into, we read this sign as into, 87. Okay, so let me go ahead and do this math. 7 goes into 8 once, and 1, 7 is just 7. Got to see what's left, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract. Got a 1 left, drop the next digit, that's a 7. 7 goes into 17 twice, and 2 7s is, of course, 14. Got my remainder? My remainder is 3. See that remainder right there? Just its very presence tells me that the answer to this question is no. 87 is not divisible by 7. How dare you suggest it? Okay. So, pretty simple concept. Divides perfectly, no remainder. Just want to make you aware that just when we teach you how to do it one way, we often change the language on you. So here's some other ways I can essentially ask the same question. We often call the smaller number, when you have two things that divide, for example, let's see, 75, maybe I should start with something smaller, huh? How about a fact we all know? How about 25? I bet you all know that 25 divided by 5 5 goes into 25 perfectly, 5 times, with no remainder, okay? So, we can say that 25 is divisible by 5, but we can also say that the smaller number, the one we divided by, is a factor. So I can say 5 is a factor of 25. And so a factor is a number that divides another number perfectly. See how it's almost the same thing? But it refers to the small number. The thing we're dividing by. And again, when I say perfectly, I mean with no remainder. No messy things left behind. 
So let's look at this GED example. And again, you might see a problem just like this on the GED. It says, is 9 a factor of 207? Again, later you're going to learn some tricks. I'm full of tricks. But right now you don't know any of them yet, so we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're actually going to divide, guys. So let's see if 9 goes into 207. Now, 9 doesn't go into 2. You can just skip that number. Some of my students put a little X right there. But 9 sure does go into 20. It goes into 22 times. Notice how I line that up right there with the back of the number I'm dividing into. And 2 9s is 18. Take that out to see what's left. Got 2 left. Drop a digit. And I ask myself the question over again. Does 9 go into 27? And some of y'all know, it sure does. It goes in three times. And three nines is 27. So I have no remainder. No remainder. It went in perfectly. So is nine a factor of 207? It sure is. There's no remainder. So the answer to this question is yes. Awesome. Okay, so once again, same question. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to talk about it in a slightly different way. We said the factor was the smaller number. The larger number is called a multiple. So in our example, uh, that 25 divided by 5 equals 5. Perfect. Yes, 25 is divisible by 5. But this number is called a factor. And this one is called a multiple. Now you're probably thinking, why is it called a multiple when we're dividing? Well, that's because the flip side of this fact is 5 times 5 is 25. If I were to multiply, I would get 25. Okay, so a multiple, I'm going to define it like this. It's a number on another number's times table. Don't get confused, guys. I'm not going to ask you to do this a different way. We're not going to suddenly start doing our times tables. We're going to do it the same way. When I ask if 465 is a multiple of 10, well, if 465 is on 10 times tables, that means that 10 will divide 465 perfectly. So I'm going to do this problem the exact same way as the last two. I'm just going to go ahead and take 10 and see if it goes into 465. Some of y'all can see ahead to this answer, but let's go ahead and do the work. 10 goes into 46 four times. Again, I skipped right over that four because it didn't go in. And four tens, whoa, put my line too fast. Got a little excited. Four tens is 40. Subtract that out. My remainder is six. Drop a digit. I've got the new number 65. And does 10 go into 65? It sure does. It goes in six times. 10 times six is 60. And look at that. I do have a remainder. Remainder, that's what's not allowed in divisibility. And so is 465 a multiple of 10? Heck no, it is not. I know I always tell you guys to practice, 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 but I'm gonna go back on my word this time because you've got no homework for this section. I don't want you doing a lot of long division until I teach you my tricks. I want you to appreciate the short way. And so um, watch the next video. We're gonna talk a little more about divisibility and I'm gonna start teaching you my tricks so that we don't even have to use long division. Uh, in order to do divisibility problems. So watch the next video, uh, 1.4, big idea number three. Expect some homework after that.